just because you make whiskey in Tennessee, that does not make it Tennessee whiskey. Go easy with it. It has its own particular recipe. It has its own particular way of filtering and aging. And if you don't do this step by step, then uh, you have not made true Tennessee whiskey. Now, true Tennessee whiskey, it's got to be predominantly corn. We're using close to 80% in our grain bill. Then the malted barley and then some rye. Well, those flavors come through. By and large, the flavor profile is going to be there and it's going to be fine liquor. You are gonna unzip it, ain't you? Well, if I can, I will. You're a patient man. You seen who I'm married to? You're the only fella I know that's been married three times and still got the same in-laws. Yep. <laughs> Lay it to it. The reason we put the malted barley in, it possesses enzymes. They have the alpha amylase that we need to help convert these starches into fermentable sugars. This is gonna put us at 240 pounds. Delicious. Ah, oh, boy, I like hearing that open up. <laughs> you get her stirring up good, it'll take two pound of yeast to kick this off good. That's two pound, ain't it? Yeah. Now this is where the pressure's on Digger. You know, he's the grain man, he's the mash guru, so, you know, I hope all of his measurements are correct, cause ball's in his court now. That's the end of that love story. Here, let me see that rascal right over here a minute. You're probably getting tired anyhow. Now with this flavor profile we've got with our grain bill, beyond that, when we put it in that barrel and age it, six months will start adding those flavor profiles. You're gonna get the vanillas, you're gonna get the cinnamons, you're gonna get the oak. Ain't nothing now to let it do but to do its deal, ain't it? Sit there and work off. Those flavor profiles are what separate a true Tennessee whiskey from an aged liquor. Cover up, turn the heat off, it'll stay warm in here tonight. Let's come back in the morning, check on it, stir it, see where we're at. I'm with you. Yeah, Whoa! That'd knock your head off. <laughs> get you a big deep breath, big nose. Oh, head. I love it. It takes the breath out of your lungs, but damn, I love it. I don't ever get enough of it. We've been checking this mash pretty much every day just because we're in a new environment. We don't know how it's going to run, but man, this place smells outstanding. Everything's worked perfect. This is going to make some fabulous Tennessee whiskey. And here we are. We're ready to run this stuff. I'm lit, go slow. I never lost a hire. You know what? This is the first big run of liquor that we've run indoors since popcorn. Yeah. I'll get our condenser going. We'll let these heads escape a little. Uh, I'll get paste and a tub to build it in. We're inside. Uh, the wind and the elements aren't pecking on our back door and nothing has went afoul yet, so we're comfortable. I know they still, people out there that's trying to make liquor in the elements and the cold weather, and I don't envy them that, but uh, better them than us. Big Sloppy, her first run ever indoors. Yeah, she's happier in a hog and slop. Me and her talk a lot. Okay. Sometimes she answers. All the liquor we've done on her, this is her first inside run. i tell you what, while we're waiting on this, let's get our filter hung. You want to? Why not? Show me how you had in mind for it. We've got this run going good. That's a good thing because we've got another process we have to take. Where you want that thing here, please? Well, I think it needs to be right in the middle where we can kind of service both racks. It being our version of Tennessee whiskey, we've got a charcoal filter. That's harder than Superman's kneecap. We filter this liquor through our liquor filtration system we built because that's part of the requirement of Tennessee whiskey it has to be over so many inches of charcoal. I'm a liking it. This alcohol is gonna get to hang out. It's not gonna be an immediately sold and consumed. It's gonna sit in a barrel for a couple of three years. Spaghetti is what we make, which is gonna involve our filter. And we're gonna have to pack it full of felt, copper, charcoal. Get a hose put on it and then we can pump the liquor, let it trickle through the filter slowly. We can drop that hose into the barrel, let it run right in. We gotta go fast or we'll run back down. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, hell, we did spill some. Yeah. Can't, Can't cry run. over spilled liquor. I say we got the bung out of that and let's just go with it. Lay it to it. All right, there we go, Hattie boy. Crank her up. Watch her go. Oh. The filter, it mellows the liquor, if you will. If there's any type of fire in it at all, being a hot, you know, unpleasant taste, like the fusel oils, charcoal mellows that out, which is a great thing. So we're done, that's good. I'll tell you what let's do. 
Let's taste a little bit of it. Yeah, we kind of need to get a read on it. I mean, we it. ain't took a sup of it yet. And, and this way it's done filtered. You know, Digger and I, we, we kind of went a ways into this run and uh, hadn't really tasted it. So we decided to see if it's worth drinking after we've run it through the charcoal filter. Look how that's a sweating on that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it tastes like liquor. Oh, about two years in that barrel yonder, it's gonna be fine. If it gets much better, I won't be able to stand it. I think it's outstanding liquor, but by the time that the barrel works its magic on it, it should be fantastic liquor. The water, I mean, that limestone spring is... Yeah, that's the deal on it. This alcohol, it's Tennessee whiskey, and it's just sitting over there, and we just get to forget about it and let it hang out for a couple of three years. But in the meantime, we can't go broke. I mean, we got to make a little money ourselves. We've always got Daniel we could rely on making corn liquor. We'll fill them all. Boom. Boom. There he is. Good old Daniel Boone. What are you doing, big boy? We're running this Tennessee whiskey, but we put Daniel to work making corn liquor. So we're going to set him up with some sugar and uh, some uh, yeast and corn. And uh, we got a little bit of information for Daniel, too. We brought you a few supplies, our old buddy. Well, I'm glad of it. We'll turn him into some good liquor. You've been running good, ain't yes, you? Yes, sir. The old buddy of ours we grew up with has called us, and he said, you know, I've got some information for you. Seems like uh, Daniel's old partner, Mike, and his buddy, Jerry, they're making mistakes one after another. I ain't stout like you. Whew. All right, brother. That ought to do you for a day or two. You can't that beat that, can you? No, sir. I got a little bit something else to put on you. Okay. Tell him where Hattie, boy. Word is, one of Mike's buyers and Jerry's buyers has been busted. <laughs> well, ain't that a bitch? Living in the south and in the mountains, everybody knows everybody, basically. And the word that Digger and I are getting is that if one of their customers has been caught and busted, you know, if history's proven anything, it's when people are in trouble, they'll sing like a damn canary. Every time. You know, I'm, I'm kind of surprised at this. That just tells me that Mike's being stupid. You know, they're young. Youngins, they, they ain't got no loyalty. And they're every one of them cowards. They won't go do their time and keep their mouth shut. Well, you know damn well that I know all about that. I got through under the bus and pulled out and run over. You know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Danny, you could tell he had a little quirky smile on his face. I'm, I'm sure that he's thinking the same thing the rest of us do. You know, like I told him, Carmen's a fickle bitch. That's enough said. It's cold. Let's get out of here. I think deep down inside, Daniel's a little bit content and happy with this news, but we're in the same business, so this means that we've got to put our radar up on DEFCON 1 as well.